How to record the sale of a financed asset in QuickBooks. Hey everyone, this is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Uh, today I am using uh, QuickBooks Desktop to show you this example. Now, the sale of a financed asset, this basically just means, you know, you have a, a vehicle, a piece of equipment, whatever the case may be. It even could be a building and you have some kind of loan on it, so some kind of financing. And a lot of people get confused thinking that there's going to be a gain, uh, which, is, which they're thinking the difference is between what you sell it for and the loan balance, but that's not the case. The gain or loss on it is the difference between the sales price and your cost basis. And your cost basis is the original purchase price of this asset less any depreciation you have taken in the past. That's called accumulated depreciation. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a way to record the sale of a financed asset uh, in QuickBooks. So you can record the gain rate, record the cash you get, take the asset and the loan off the books, etc. Okay, so I did type up uh, some things here that you need to kind of gather before you can record this. So the first thing is, whatever this asset is, get the original cost. What did it originally cost you to buy this asset and how did you record this in QuickBooks? So where did you record it? Accumulated depreciation. How much depreciation has been taken on this asset? Now, some people have, uh, you know, they track depreciation internally in their business. Other people, smaller businesses may have to ask their accountant or look on the tax return to see what is the accumulated depreciation on this particular asset? Then you need the loan balance. This is just the principal, the payoff. What is the payoff on this loan? The sales price, pretty easy. And then how much money did you receive? All right, now the money you receive is typically gonna be the sales price less the loan balance. There may be some small closing costs and things in there, but you know, for this purpose, we're making these round numbers. All right, so we need to take this information so if you gather this information we need to take this and we need to go over to quickbooks and i'm going to move this over here so that i can show you in quickbooks so the first thing that you know the the easiest thing to do is to do a journal entry now again people get a little confused with journal journal entries debits and credits etc uh, but i'm going to show you how to do this in here so first of all go to company make general journal entries all right, so the date is gonna be the date of the sale. You know, we'll say it's 12-15-2023. And the entry number, you know, typically you should have some way of, of putting in a, a way to know who made the journal entry. Typically we do our initials or company initials, et cetera, if we're doing it for a client. So we'll just say that's MJH, me. All right, so the first thing is the account. We gotta choose the account. Let me bring this back over. All right, let me pull QuickBooks back up here. All right, so the first one is going to be the asset. Which asset was this? What account was it originally recorded in? Because we wanna take it off the books now since we sold it. So we are going to say that this was a vehicle. All right, so we are going to credit $50,000. And that is because a credit reduces the assets for vehicles on the books. So we want to take it off the books. When we bought it, it would have been a debit. Now we sell it, it's gonna be a credit. Next is going to be accumulated depreciation. All right, so we wanna take accumulated depreciation off the books and you can see here that that is $20,000. All right, so $20,000, we wanna make that a debit because when you record accumulated depreciation, it's a credit. Now we're doing a debit to take it off the books. All right, the next thing is the loan balance and we are going to go down and find the loan where we have it. Now the loan balance in your QuickBooks should match what the payoff is. All right, so we're gonna say this was a loan on a dump truck and we're going to debit this for 14,500. Now, the reason we debit is because a loan balance is a credit, and so to get rid of it, we debit it, so we zero it out. 
All right, next, let me just bring this over here. We've got the sales price, 37,000. Okay, now that doesn't go into the journal entry. I'll show you how we figure out what goes in the journal entry. But right now we're gonna say money received, 22,500. All right, so uh, we are going to say checking, that we put that into the checking account. That was 22,500. All right, so let me debit that because a debit increases the checking account as an asset. Then we have this leftover $7,000 balance. All right, so let me show you this. The gain on this is going to be the sales price minus the difference of these two numbers, the original cost and the accumulated depreciation. So beginning of the video, I said your cost basis is the difference between these two. That's $30,000 and we sold it for 37. So we have a gain on the sale of this uh, dump truck of $7,000. And that's what this remaining amount is. So a gain, let's see if we have this account in here. Okay, gain on the sale of an asset. This should be, yep, an other income account, all right? It's not operating revenue, it's just other income. So we have gain on the sale of an asset. And if you have a loss, it's gonna be a debit balance. Okay, so a credit balance is a gain that's going to be income. And so now we have our journal entry. So again, to recap, what we've done is we've taken the vehicle off the books. We took the accumulated depreciation off the books. We took the loan off the books, put the cash in the books that we got, and we recorded the gain from the sale. All right. So very, very important to remember these steps. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below and I'll see you in another video.